Hello everyone, Michael A. Chave here from the Morning Coffee Review Series here today to give you a quick tip on how to change the color background of your page or multiple pages in your set. This came up as a question and there's two different processes I went through. The first one wasn't as efficient as I thought it was going to be, but I'm still going to show you that one because it is helpful if you're trying to do maybe something different. The other one, which will be the last one, is gonna be the way I find is the most beneficial for you all. Again, there may be some other ways out there, but this is what I found out so far. If you have um, an idea, please leave it in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe and throw a thumbs up if you like this video. But let's hop on in to review and show you how this can be done. So now that I'm in review, we're going to be talking about, again, changing the color background of a document set. So the first thing that came to mind when this question came up was, hey, Mike, how can I do this? So I thought, oh, under document, we have color processing. This is going to be the most efficient way. The only downside to this is that sometimes when you bring over a set, let's say from Revit, if you have opaque text, it won't let you go through and actually have a background to it, right? It's not transparent text, so it has a background assigned to it. So if I change things from white to red here, it's actually some of the text and some of the items in it aren't gonna fully change. And maybe this suffices for what your needs are, right? This is great. I just don't want people to know that this is part of the set. They shouldn't be editing or revisioning it. Maybe this is good enough. Um, but the issue with this is if I go to a different set, it may not even pick up things from this different, different set either. So if I go to here and try to go color processing and say everything that was white go to red, it's not really picking anything up. So it's really choice sensitive for some reason. Um, I don't know why, but if I go black to red, that actually works. So I think this tool was really meant to change the vector data, not really to change the PDF color. So what is the better way to do this? In my opinion, it is the best way to do this is to go to tools and stamp and create a stamp that's actually going to be applied to it. So let's go through and create a stamp that's specific to this page size that we'll use to apply to all pages. So in order to do that, I just have to go to stamps. I know I already went there, create a stamp. I'm going to name it red. And since the page sizes are a little bit different for some of our sets. Oops, don't save. Let's go back, tools, stamp. Then let's do the size. Since this is going to be a 36 by 24, I'm going to name it of subject red and then 36. Uh, I don't know if you could do slashes 24. We'll see here. And then the blend mode. So this blend mode is important. You want it to be darkened. This is the best one that I've found for running this. You can also use the same thing as a stamp that will change the color of the line work, maybe just in a specific area if that's something you're looking for. Um, that's not going to be darkened. I, you, you'd have uh, if that's something you want to know, just leave in the comment. I'll have to remember which one it was of these that you can do that too. Now I'm not going to change the opacity here because when you apply the stamp, you can change the opacity. I'm just going to hit OK. Um, yeah, so you can't have these caricatures. So let me just put their X behind, uh, to separate it. Great. So now this is a 36 by 24 page size, and I'm going to apply a rectangle to get a fill color from here to here. Now I'm going to use fill. I'm going to keep this at a hundred. I've done this before where I put 60 and all those items, but the thing is you can change the opacity of your stamp before it's placed. So I'm gonna save this at, as the highest opacity, and I'm just gonna hit save. Now, how do I go through and do this and place it on all of my pages? You're gonna to go to thumbnails here. From thumbnails, you're just going to right click anywhere in the thumbnails area and apply a stamp. Now from here, what I can do is at the center of my anchor, because this is where you're anchoring the markup or the stamp. And I'm gonna go down and look for red 36 by 24. This is also where you can change the opacity. So if I would have made the opacity of the markup lighter, 
I wouldn't be able to variate from that in here because it would have been already at 60. So if I'm lighting, making it less opacity, it would have just looked a little bit weird. So what I like to do is make sure it's at 100 what it was prior. And then in here, you can decide what you want it to do. Now from here, I have at the top this specific PDF. I could add anything from open files, any folders, subfolders, and I can be very uh, decisive on where I want this to be applied. Current, selected range, custom range. I could have gone through and hit control and say the, these pages that were selected. Um, you have some options to go through. I'm just gonna do all pages to show you what would happen to all pages. And then I'm gonna hit okay. So just like that, the background has been changed to red. And this is the most efficient way I've found to accomplish this. Now, if you have a different way that you feel is more efficient, please leave it in the comment. I would love to check it out. Um, if not, thumbs up is great. Thank you all for attending my quick tip today. And I look forward to showing you more in the future.